All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Anne Grady, who is in Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Anne? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. No, absolutely. Anne is a speaker, author, and truth bomb dropper. Okay, so we'll be looking for some truth bombs today. Um, and she is she is the uh, the head of the Anne Grady Group. Has done TEDx speeches. Um, has had a work in various uh, Harvard Business Review, Entrepreneur Forbes, Fast Company Inc., etc. So what we're going to talk today is about one of my favorite subjects: resilience, and particularly sales resilience. So we find ourselves obviously in in turbulent times, and and when this goes out. Uh, in a week or so, we'll still be in those turbulent times. We're not going to turn around that fast. So, um, and so there was the initial shock, you know, and and maybe everything fell apart a bit, and and everybody stopped spending, or a lot of people stopped spending money, and sales got, uh, you know, kind of it, it was a panicky time. Now things are maybe they're not certainly not getting back to normal, but maybe people are settling down a bit more. But now is the time when sales people and sales leaders need to really show some level of resilience and pick themselves up and figure out, okay, how can I forge forward from here, given the constraints that I'm operating under? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think it, 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 what's fascinating is that change is the same as grief in terms of the way our brain mm -hmm. processes it and the way that it works. So we, you know, I think, we can all relate to going through this kind of denial, like, wait, what you want right. me to, do, you want me to do what? Um, I know as an entrepreneur, as a speaker and trainer and facilitator, our business was hit hard because, you know, I sure. speak at events all over the world. And so when you've got large events with large gatherings, those have been canceled. So, you know, I went through the, the first phase of like, this is not happening, no way. And then a lot of people get kind of angry, like it's not fair, woe is me, we get into this learned helplessness phase. And then you got to figure out, okay, now it's time to put on my big girl pants for, <laughs> you know, what, what are you going to do going forward? Because um, I think in, in sales, especially, um, it is in these times that we actually build the most resilience. And it's during these times that we can learn from these experiences. So for example, in my business, we've completely pivoted. I'm giving, I gave an, a keynote address on Thursday to 900 people. Um, and then right. I'm doing lots of virtual training and virtual programs. So it's not that it's easy, but it's where the growth happens. Yeah. And I think that's to, to your point is, I mean, it's, to be honest, it's, it's relatively easy to do well during good times, isn't it? And good times, like paper over the cracks a, a lot of the time. And yeah, it really does. Because I, I remember at the last time, I mean, the financial you know crash or whatever, is I was running another company, Hathaway, we spin selling. And, and when we were training organizations, a lot of them would say, you know, we we had such a great sales force, but you know, now they're just they're just not performing anymore. And I used to say to them, but did you have a really good sales force? Yeah. Because I mean, it was you know budgets were plentiful. Everybody was spending money. Right. It's it's you know it's easy to operate in those circumstances. Right. So now is the time you got to dig deep, and you kind of got to. I mean, now is the time you got to kind of look at your skill set, look at your processes, and everything, and figure out what do I need to change. Right. But it's also good to be reminded to be hungry again. You know, like yeah. so. I think any salesperson who we all get better as we practice and you develop these skills. And at some point, if you're fortunate enough, it's easy to become kind of complacent. Like the business is just coming. Like when I started consulting, you know, I spent 95% of my time selling and 5% actually delivering. And as you develop skills and you grow the business. Now I would say prior to COVID, it was 99% of the time, delivering and 1% of the time selling. And it was just, mm. you know, the, the leads come to me, which is yeah. really a nice place to be, but it also sure. uh, creates some complacency. And so it's been a, a reminder of how important it is to be hungry and gritty and not let the nose stop you. Yeah, and uh, and realize that uh, you know that did you still you do still need to prospect, and unfortunately everything yeah. is not going to land on your lap, and especially right now, you know, inbound is going to be a bit tougher, right? 
Yeah, we went from getting multiple inbound leads a day um, to probably a few a week. Um, so they didn't stop altogether, but they definitely decreased. And I think right now it's because everybody's trying to wait until they figure out what the new normal is going to look like. So it puts budgets on hold of, well, is the economy going to pick up? Do we need to let some people go? What are we going to have to do? And so it's tough when you've got a, um, a product or a service that you know can make a difference and can help people, mm -hmm. but things are on hold. So that's why it's so important. It, you know, a, a mentor of mine used to say, it's a numbers game. I mean, that's all mm -hmm. it is. It is a numbers game. Now, as you get better at it, your ratios become better, but that's really what it is. And so if you are used to kind of sitting back on your laurels and, and being comfortable, then this is probably a, a pretty big slap in the face. Um, but again, it's just a numbers game and you have to refine your pitch and you have to think about the new stalls and objections and the way you overcome those and under, you know, really understanding the buyer's motives and what they need and, and what problem they're trying to solve. And I think it makes it more important than ever for people, especially in sales to be like level three listeners, right? So there's three right. levels of listening. There's the I'm listening, but I'm checking my phone and I'm seeing, you know, who's texting me while I'm talking to you. There's level two, which is like, I'm totally here with you. I'm not paying attention to external forces, but I'm just kind of thinking about what I got going on. And I might ask you yeah. questions and paraphrase, but level three is like, all right, John, what are you struggling with? And let me truly be present and then figure out if my service or product can help you. And if not, I'll be the first to tell you. But I think sometimes we lose sight of the basics. Yeah, because if you're not listening, as you say, like level three listening right now, you could conceivably be hearing because you're expecting to maybe you're predisposed to be expecting to hear a no or we put things on hold or we're not doing anything. And that may be the message that you initially get. But when you get into a conversation and you're really listening, you discover that actually there is opportunity for persuasion there to get somebody yeah. to execute on something now. But if you're, but to your point, if you're not listening intently, you could miss that and think, oh, that's another one who's not doing anything. Yeah. And, and I think for, for so many people, you know, sales becomes about the numbers, but it's really mm -hmm. about connection. You know, you can't sure. influence behavior if there's no connection. So it, it's great to do small talk. Hey, where are you? Where are you? What are you going through? What are you going through? But it's truly building the relationship that means even if now is not the time that they will remember you because you are mm -hmm. the one who really took the time to, to build and nurture that relationship. And I think there's also a little bit of learned helplessness. You know, it's easy to become a victim when yeah. you run up against a couple walls. It's easy to go, well, it's it's just because of the coronavirus and nobody's buying right now. Well, yeah. they are. They are buying. Yeah. It's just different reasons and different motivations, but they're buying. And maybe it's just and maybe you need to look beyond the industries or the segments or the verticals that you have traditionally sold into. Right. Yeah, maybe things are a little tougher right there. But if you look around right now, I mean, there are some industries that are flying. I mean, um, um, well, not the airlines, obviously. But <laughs> Sorry, can resist that. that but but <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I was terrible. I, I apologize. <laughs> um, but look, logistics, I mean, logistics, I mean, there's a lot, there's business in logistics. You look at, you know, you know, medical devices, all of that kind of stuff, you know, medical. Um, uh, I mean, you saw there's, there's a lot of, uh, on, there's a lot of, uh, software tools and stuff that are now becoming very popular. So there are industries out there. So maybe you just need to take a look at where do you traditionally sell? And maybe you just got to get a little uncomfortable and branch out to, to industries or verticals that, uh, are doing okay right now. And I think that what you just said is the key. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? Resilience is not built when the leads are just coming in. That's a wonderful feeling. It's, it's a great time to be in sales, yeah. but it's also not when you're building resilience. Resilience is built when you are exhausted and your, you know, your habit patterns have been shook and so it requires you to be willing to get uncomfortable enough to ask different questions. And like you said, go after different markets or reapproach the way 
you outline the problem or, or, you know, those types of things. And most of us like to be in our comfortable habit patterns. Mm, sure. And when you take something like a pandemic, everything is so thrown out of whack that I don't think we often realize how hard our brain is having to work, which I, I hear people saying, well, why am I not as productive? I'm working at home. Well, because everything you're doing requires a different habit pattern. Even if you were remote before, simply the fact that everybody is now and you're trying to sell while someone's bouncing a toddler on their lap and mm -hmm. they've got dinner cooking in the kitchen and their spouse is yelling at them from the other room. So our brain really hates uncertainty. It views it as a threat. Our, our brain views change as a threat. So it's getting your brain to work for you rather than against you. And unfortunately, that requires a change in behavior. So it could be something like not watching news for the first 30 minutes yeah. that you wake up because it hijacks you for the rest of the day and puts you in that fight or flight mode. It could be as simple as like putting your phone in another room. Research suggests that just having the phone in your room distracts you. And you know, when I've got a list of prospects I'm calling, if there's a Facebook message that comes in, well, that's more fun to look at. So it's yeah. retraining your, your brain and cultivating new habits that are going to get you the output and the result that you need. Yeah, and I think that's uh, and that's something that I preach as well. So I think that's another good point to underline is that idea of be very careful what you start your day with because uh, that you can derail you so fast. I would say. Yeah, news today, it's not there to inform you, it's there to provoke you. And it doesn't matter what where you sit on the political spectrum, where you get your news from, it's there to provoke a reaction, it's not there to inform you. And therefore, if, if you want to get provoked leaves. first, yeah, yeah, exactly. So think about it, do you want to get provoked first thing in the morning? Yeah, it's kind of like going every morning, I want to go ahead and find the biggest bully and yeah. let him steal get my lunch money, head. just for fun. <laughs> You wouldn't do that. So why check social media and email? And when your brain is weakest cognitively is the first 30 minutes you're up and the last 30 mm. minutes you're awake. And these are the times where we're like, well, I better fill my head with all this horrible, tragic yeah. information. And, you know, your brain isn't built to um, help you sell. Your brain is built to help you survive. So mm. we sometimes get in this cycle when you start the day watching the news, our negativity bias actually forces us to go find all the evidence that supports our worst fears and and this you know this confirmation bias of yeah. the world is coming yeah. to an end chicken little I'll never sell anything again it'll be horrible um, so give yourself the gift of 30 minutes just yeah. either meditating or playing with your dogs or enjoying a sip of coffee in the silence but it, it's exactly you know. no I, I think that's incredible and i would lump a social media in there too is like stay Absolutely. off that stuff because again you're going to you're going to see something on social media that either you're going to look like somebody is doing great or having a great time yeah. or whatever and I, it's just a snapshot and it's and we nothing. compare ourselves right oh, so oh yeah Comparison they post of a picture of their new car and you're like well it must be nice i can't even close a mm. deal let alone get a new car well you don't know what they're going through exactly it's exactly social comparison. so i think but there's something else that you touched on there and i think that, that we really need to underline that and that is the the thing that it's very tempting right now to blame everything, to say like, there's nothing happening. Everything is, you know, COVID, oh, can't do anything, can't do anything. Yeah. What would it be like if you didn't give yourself that excuse every day? If you just said, I'm not gonna give myself that excuse. Well, I think it, there's the difference between using it as an excuse and coming to terms with reality, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I agree with you that saying, well, I can't do anything until the world opens up back again yeah. is not doing you any good. And it's not doing your customers or prospective customers any good, but saying, okay, here's the reality that we're in. How do I tap into that so that I'm solving problems for people yeah. in the process? So for example, right now, if you're a motivational speaker who gets on stages in front of thousands of people yeah, like sure. I do, Nobody is knocking down my door going, hey, can you uh, fly out to Hawaii to give us a, a, a great speech? But I speak on resilience and corporations all over the world, schools, healthcare facilities, government agencies are all struggling to keep people focused and engaged. So what do they need? Well, they need a virtual way to build resilience. Oh my gosh, guess what? What a coincidence. I'm able to offer that. So it's like, the need is different. The reality is very real, but there are ways to 
get creative about problem solving. And you can't do that when you're operating out of a place of fear. You just you yeah, can't. no, I agree with you. I mean, I meant it, it's a, you know giving yourself a kind of blanket kind of get out of jail card. Yeah. Um, I think it should, be, yeah. it, it should be when you say, okay, this there there really is nothing I can do here in this instance. So that's it. I've, I've exhausted everything. I've had the conversation. I'm going to move on here, but I'm not going to, you know, kind of use it as my get out of jail. Or, yeah, sorry, no revenue this month. It's, you know, divine. well, and the other thing is use the time. So yeah. use the time to brush up on your skills or to, you know, invest in your own development things. I, I joke, like if someone had mm. told me in December, Hey, guess what? You're not going to have to be on a plane four days a week. You're going to be at your home where you're comfortable with your dogs. And yeah, you might be working harder, but all everything's going to change and you're going to have time to really reevaluate what's important to you. I would have been like, hell yeah, bring it on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was exhausted. Well, now we're here and we're griping and moaning about it. It's like, find a way in whatever situation you're in to not only survive it, but to learn from it and learn during it, because that's what brings you out stronger on the other side. Yeah. And and in many ways, embrace it, because as you said, I mean, this, you know, something, I mean, w one of the things that we've run a largely virtual company for six or seven years, and we did that strategically. Uh, and, and so it's a, it's a normal way of business for us. Right. And it's, it's for other people, it, it isn't. And so they're learning about it. And I keep saying to people is, you know, embrace it. And you don't know what's going to happen. You may actually find that it works better for you. You may actually find that it ends up, you end up with more productive and happy employees that their lives. And so I think part of it is like, don't just sort of go, oh, I can't wait for things to get back to the way it was, because, you know, it may not get back to the way it was. And it may not be the right thing for you for it to go back to the way it right. was. So take the opportunity, embrace it, explore it and see what happens. Yeah. And it's easier said than done when you have, when you're worried about where your next meal is going to come from or how you're going to sure. feed your family. Right. So I think it's, I think there's, it's important to acknowledge the very real stressors. And also, you know, when we work remotely, we tend to work more hours than when we work at the office. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I'm working with my corporate clients right now, the biggest challenge they have is we're expected to be on all the time. And I think it's super important for folks in sales to realize that self-care is so critically important. Yeah. The human brain cannot stay in that focused flow state for six hours without having rest and breaks. It can't stay at that level of performance. So I know a lot of sales folks are like, well, I'm just calling all day. Every, I'm just on the phone, on the phone, on the phone. Well, when are you taking a break? Because your brain will work better if you're taking care of it. And, and I think that's it's an incredibly important thing that you just said there, because I even think of when we have our meetings now, sometimes like we it's it's fun, like somebody will say, uh, oh, yeah, well, I just took an hour, I went out running or whatever. And then everybody's like, oh, yeah, was it good? You know, did you have a good run? Where'd you go? So I, I think the other thing is to what I mean about embrace it is also is to talk to talk to the people you work with, your peers, your managers. And, and now is the time people are going to be more flexible to how. Mm -hmm working is going to get the best out of you. So if you say, listen, m my kids are insane from like eight o'clock in the morning, you know, I oh, saw, I can't start it. <laughs> yeah. It's a, well, yeah, but maybe there are parts say, listen, I'm going to have to take care of them at this part. And then yep. I'm going to come on and do that. I'm just going to rearrange your day. And I think if everybody is just open and communicative, like people are understanding and they'll say, great, okay, let's figure out a way to make this work. Absolutely. And I think for so long, we've just done it the way it's always been done. And this is yeah. the opportunity to reinvent the way we do it. And there will be things that, like you said, we go back and it's actually an improvement and it, and it mm -hmm. created an unanticipated bonus. And there will be things where like, oh, thank God we're back to doing this again because it's way easier. <laughs> but the people who will continue to be successful are the ones who are going to be like, all right, what is the unlikely gratitude? Right. What are the things right. that I'm grateful for and thankful for and using that to kind of offset our propensity to the negative? Yeah, no. And I think that's a great point to to end on it. And I think that's it. We have to as hard as and we know that. Uh, I know when people sort of like to say we're all in the same boat, well, we're not all in the same boat. Like no. some people are in, in much rougher circumstances than others. So I know it's hard at times. Um, to be positive. But I think if you can give yourself the gift of being as positive as you can be in your circumstances, it will really stand to you. 
Yeah, absolutely. My, my third book uh, is coming out in October. It's called Mind Over Moment, Harness the Power of Resilience. And you know, as someone who's been in sales for 20 years, it was learning how to be aware of the thoughts and the emotions that were serving me and the ones that were sabotaging mm-hmm. me um, and really proactively cultivate the ones that help you. So um, the more you can do to take care of you, focus on gratitude and and not try to run from the difficult stuff. I think that's the biggest key for me and the sales teams that I'm working with is most of us don't like the anxiety and the uncertainty and the discomfort. So we try to run from it and we numb it. Right. Um, but that only serves to intensify it and increase the duration. Right. So yeah. as the military says, sometimes you just have to embrace the suck. Yeah, then I think that's it. That's a great place to and listen. Uh, and and listen, this has been great. Uh, before we go, all of Van's information will be in our contributor bio. And I would like you hopefully come back in October when your new book is coming out. That would be great. I would love to. And um, before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I'm Ann Grady. I am a resilience expert, entrepreneur, author, speaker, trainer, truth bomb dropper. So I work with teams all over the world to help cultivate grit and resilience to help them grow through times just like these and get stronger as a result. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline, CRM. See you off for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.